So in a previous video, we looked at um, just basic um, stress and strain, um, looking at uh, some kind of specimen like a steel dog bone. Um, and basically, if you attach these ends and you start to pull uh, your specimen, then you'll start to see uh, it elongate, obviously, and then you can uh, measure the force uh, based on the distance you um, pulled the specimen. And we saw in the previous video that um, for a while, it was a straight line, which meant that for every increment of force you added to the uh, specimen, it would just elongate a, a proportional amount. And we called this the linear elastic range, um, which meant that if you, at any point in this uh, straight line, you stopped pulling the material, it would actually return right back to the original length, um, thus the elastic word. So, but at some point, when you've pulled far enough, then it starts to behave a little differently. Uh, it starts to if you're drawing this graph, it starts to flatten out. And this basically means that uh, for a certain force um, or stress, um, you're just observing continual elongation. So start to think of like some rubber taffy or something that's just stretching more and more, um, even though you're exerting the same force. And we call this the plastic range. Um, and here, if you did happen to stop pulling the material, it actually wouldn't return to its original state. It would um, end up a little longer than it was. And this is akin to like a slinky that's been pulled a little too long and now it's just kind of like um, floppy. Um, so uh, material like steel, if you do this test, it will uh, behave a lot like this and it'll have a very long plastic range where it's just getting longer and longer. But then something weird happens where it has strain hardening. So if we look at steel, after a certain distance out here, um, it suddenly comes back up again. And this seems non-intuitive, but if you look at um, the chemical structure, if you imagine like a steel lattice, um, this isn't exactly exact, but um, something with you know, atoms, molecules um, connected together, and you're pulling this entire thing. Um, here we're starting to see these bonds deform, um, but then at some point maybe it's um, pulled to a distance where they're so dislocated and far apart that now they're actually starting to rub against each other. And now, uh, as you pull, it actually starts to resist that pull once more, um, even though it seemed to not resist it for a while. So this is called strain hardening, this region right here. Um, and it, only a couple materials do this, so it really depends on the molecular makeup of the material. Uh, and it goes up and up um, a little bit more until you reach the ultimate stress. And after here, then it starts to behave like you would expect. It starts to fail. Uh, this is called necking. And if you were to look at the piece at this point, um, it would actually start to look like it's breaking apart right here. Um, and then after just a little bit longer, then it fails. Um, and here are some specimens um, that have failed. And you see that right at the edge, it is actually a little bit thinner, and that's what happened with the necking. Um, but this is brass. It did not have string hardening, and this was a... Uh, uh, aluminum and it also didn't have string hardening, um, but a steel um, piece would uh, behave in this way and it's unique to steel and some other materials.